Hello everyone, my name is Michał. I work at Reality Games here in Krakow, and today I want to talk about old things, which are functions, and uh, new things, which are service meshes. And uh, I will talk about them because I want to show you how they can be used in order to build more maintainable and testable APIs. And my agenda for today is uh, to reinvent the test pyramid. So who uh, here knows what test py pyramid is? Okay, some of you. So this is just a categorization of tests, right? So what kind of tests in our software should be uh, should we use when we are uh, programming and uh, building bigger software architectures? So today I want to go bottom up, right? So we will start with the lower lower layers and try to reinvent them. That means. I will try to convince you, or we'll try together to convince ourselves that we need better tools, that we need some kind of uh, other techniques, other categorizations in our tests in order to really uh, have a better testability and maintainability in our new emerging ar architectures, which are more based on, on different communication patterns, asynchronous communications, event-based and distributed, right? Uh, so let's start with unit tests. This is the in traditional approach. This is at the bottom of the, of the testing pyramid. And unit tests are very problematic. Uh, the first thing, the problems we have with, with unit tests are is usually are the same, like people are arguing whether this should be, what is a unit, right? Is it a class, is it a function, is it something bigger, something smaller? And of course, uh, the main problem uh, in the regards of semantics is that we don't really know whether we are testing the real thing. So. Why do we want, uh, it's at the bottom of the testing pyramid, right? So why do we want so many of them? We want them not because they are unit tests, but because they are fast, they are quick to read, quick to write, and they are stable, more, uh, more or less, and uh, we can really quickly automate them. Th they are uh, also our documentation of our software, right? So this is a feedback loop, very fast, very, very nice to, to, uh, to use. So, and in unit tests, we are usually doing mocks and stops in order to make them fast, make them quick to write and, and, and read, right? And uh, I have problems with mocks. In my, my opinion, uh, it's a code smell. Because usually in object-oriented programming, we are uh, mocking whole interfaces, like three, four, five methods. And uh, this is a problem because what we are missing more often is that the connection between them is different. There's, there are semantics. The, those five methods in, in, in an interface uh, are really connected semantically with each other, and usually we miss that when we are mocking them. That's why when we need to mock anything, it should be just zero or one function. So we should just be mocking data, or if you will really want to mock behaviors, it should be just one function because it's the smallest possible piece, and it's, possibly, uh, it's possible more often that we can get it right. So uh, the new pyramid, the, the part one of our journey is that uh, no, n th there shouldn't be any unit tests at the bottom. There shouldn't be just fast table and tests that are real. Real, that means that we are not mocking uh, so much, uh, so many things. And the example today I want to show you, and the journey uh, to the top of the pyramid is a game server for the Pac-Man. So we will start with the engine, and uh, there will be some other pieces in our service uh, ar architecture that we will we'll try to uh, use and then test in our new uh, pyramid. So let's start with the engine. Engine, that means, you know, moving, rotating, uh, eating dots, uh, wrapping, things like that. So very, very simple thing. And let's start with the domain. The domain for this Pac-Man engine is uh, like uh, something like this. So we should have something like Pac-Man, which has a position and direction, and the position is just x and y, and in screen coordinates, x goes to the right, and uh, y goes to the south, it's to the bottom, so south, and we have directions like east, west, south, and, and north, right? Then we, we can have a grid. A grid, a very, very simple model of uh, where the Pac-Man goes, uh, what's the setup, so width, height, what, what are the usable cells, usable cells, that means uh, Pac-Man can go there and can have dots that can be eaten, and of course the initial Pac-Man position which is related to this, uh, to this grid. And the most important thing, we'll be using immutable approach, the, the game state. So the game state is the object that, uh, that has a current snapshot of the world. And that means where the Pac-Man is, the first parameter, what's the next uh, chosen uh, Pac-Man's direction that the user chose, the grid that we are currently moving in, and dot cells, which are the things that Pac-Man eats. 
and the immutable approach. That means that we, in our engine, very, very simple and testable. So this is kind, kind of warm up for the whole talk. And the functions will be like game state in, game state out. Current game state, what is the snapshot of the world, do something, and return a new game, uh, game state. And that's all. So this is a very, very quick and uh, testable approach. So we will have a very, very nice tests and that are real and stable. Real that because there is there's nothing that is not used in the production. Uh, and in Scala, are we using Scala and Scala as we have something like, like, like that that we, we can use in our tests. So the context, we don't have to have a before each, before all, and things like that. We can have all the context in, in, in this kind of traits, which are instantiated and, and every time the test is run. It's very uh, fast. In this case, we'll be uh, passing the context of the grid. So what kind of positions are there? What is the width and height? And uh, we'll be naming them like two by two empty grid means that there are no walls, so the Pac-Man should just go around. And this is how the test looks like. So we'll be using uh, we'll be using this kind of approach, three lines, and every test that we'll, we'll write will have three lines, of three lines of code, initial state, and then then we'll be triggering the functionality, and then we'll be uh, asserting on what's what's the next uh, what the next position should be. So let's start with uh, with this kind of approach. <coughs> Presentation mode. W what we'll try to do first, like just a warm up, so that we we are aware what the what kind of fun functionality, what kind of software will we will we will be trying to implement. So we'll be trying to uh, implement the movement, simple, very simple movement of the of Pac-Man. So Pac-Man should move east, right? The the same that I shown you on the slide. Uh, so the position, first position is zero zero, should move east. So the next position should be one zero. Again, x it goes to the right. So let's try to let's try to run this test. First, it should uh, it should fail because it's not yet uh, implemented, right? Implementation is missing. So let's let's uh, Im let's implement that. In order to implement that, we'll be we'll need to first get the old old position, the current position from the game state. So it's Pac-Man and the position, and then we need to figure out what's what's the next uh, direction uh, direction that the Pac-Man should go in. So game state, uh, next Pac-Man's Pac uh, direction, which is an option. So we need to be able to handle the, the else case, which is game state, the current direction, right? So we need to, on this move Pac-Man, this is a tick. So this is the, the, the time when Pac-Man goes one cell to the right or to the left, the, depending on the direction. And then the new position, the new position is based on the direction. So we are just matching. Uh, it's a east, so its its uh, direction is first. So we'll just uh, do the east case, uh, like TDD baby steps. And don't worry about that. We'll implement all the others uh, in a minute. So we'll just need to copy the x coordinate, uh, which should be uh, plus one, right? Because it's east. So it's something like that. So we have a new position. And then what we can do is we can just return the, the new state with a new Pac-Man, uh, which is updated. So the new position and uh, new direction. So something something like that. And uh, in, in this case, the test should should run fine. And in TDD, you know, baby steps. So we are just implementing very, very simple, uh, simple steps. The next one should be the next direction, things like that. So step by step, we can implement all the movement functionalities. They are also uh, used as documentation for our features. And they are pretty fast, so we can have many of them. And in TDD, we are using a uh, scaffolding approach, right? So uh, we are using tests first, but they can be removed later on if we really want to have like regression tests only. Uh, then we can remove the tests that just help us with the helped us with the design. So let's try to uh, run all the movement tests first. As you can see, other cases are failing. So let's try to let's try to implement them, and we'll move on to the next one. So. Uh, this is this is uh, this kind of approach that we are using. We are changing the implementation. We have our old tests that are that are uh, sorry that are guarding us uh, in order to not make um, some regression problems in our in our implementation. So something like something like that. Y in north is minus one and uh, plus one. 
so this should work. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, this should work. And what we are missing is that we shouldn't be able to move the Pac-Man into a wall. So uh, something like uh, when we are moving, all right, uh, when we are moving um, into the wall, then the Pac-Man should just stop there. So let's try to implement that. Uh, in our case, this should be a very, very simple fix. Uh, because we have a hel helper position. Is position legal? Then a new position, new position, game state. Yeah. And if it's legal, then we return this new immutable object. If it's not, then we return the old state. So it's something, something I in, in those kind of uh, categories. We are just doing tests and then simple fixes, tests and simple fixes, things. Uh, things like that. So this is how how the engine can can uh, look like. So let's go back to the slides. Uh, as you can see, this is text. So this is the documentation, right? So they are very very quick to read. This is initial state. Then we are triggering something. Then this is final state. We are asserting on it and things like that. The text is just the like the features that we have in our engine, the Pacman and uh, the Pacman enters engine. And of course, there are some different mo more different. Uh, features uh, we should be able to to rotate the Pac-Man based on the user uh, user clicking the the buttons. But of course, when when it it is uh, uh, when it's near the wall, then we should just wait until there is a, a hole, and then uh, only then rotate things like that. So uh, the rotation shouldn't be possible when we are uh, next to the wall to the right. It's all on only should be possible when we are moving into the wall directly, things like that. So uh, even in this simple game, there are many different uh, cases. And each of those cases, are uh, we are documenting as this very, very small uh, test. And we can implement and refactor as, uh, as we go, eating the dot. Uh, they, they are very, very quick to. Uh, to write, and they are stable because it's immutable, right? So it's just the object in, object out, nothing more. We are not not doing any side effects. Uh, we are just using pure functions, stateless functions, Im immutable da data, things uh, like that. So again, quick to write, quick to read, stable and fast, because all of those game engine tests, uh, even in Scala, which is uh, which is slower than than more more many many more lang languages, it's like 900 milliseconds for the whole engine to be to be tested. So we want something like that. We want to have a quick uh, feedback loop. So let's move uh, up in this testing pyramid. So we ha we need to have fast, stable, and real tests at the bottom. And the next one traditionally is like service integration uh, kind of uh, tests, right? So uh, I want to show you how can we uh, how can we approach that in our new emerging ar architectures. So HTTP layer. How to test HTTP layer? Mo many of you probably have some idea about that. But before we move into the live coding session about that, let's just go quickly for the requirements. The requirements are, are like that. So we will have a post to games in order to create a new game, and we need to provide a grid name. In this case, a level named Miss Pacman Level 1. And uh, our user interface will be just uh, fetching the current state using the get request games uh, and the game ID, and it will get a position and direction in the, in the Pac-Man uh, in a return. So those two requirements that need to be implemented. And of course, what we want to have again is want to we want to have fast and stable tests, which are not very flaky, uh, quick to read and write, and of course they need to document what we are really trying to. Achieve. In this case, we are trying to achieve a HTTP layer uh, in isolation with uh, anything else. So let's try to let's try to implement that. Sorry. Yep. Yep. All right. So HTTP routes. Let's take a look of on how the, uh, how the routes traditionally look like. So if we uh, like to naively, intuitively just you know implement the requirements, get and post, we'll probably end up with something like that. We need to have a state, so we need to have uh, a place where the game state, uh, game ID, and game state are matched together because the users will be getting the state based on this int. And of course, 
we need to be able to complete the request with some kind of Pacman state response, which is just a wrapper. Uh, so separation of concerns, we are just wrapping. This is, a, this is the JSON class, and inside we have a Pacman domain class. So Pacman doesn't know anything about the JSON. And that's, uh, that's um, pretty simple, right? Th this is something like that that we should uh, be doing. But in my opinion, we shouldn't be uh, having anything uh, state related. Uh, it's not even uh, not really testable, but it's uh, purely wrong because HTTP layer is just, you know, HTTP request in, HTTP request out, JSON in, JSON out, and nothing more, right? So it, the, the only responsibility of this HTTP layer is to handle requests and uh, serialize, deserialize things to, j to and from JSON in this case, right? State is not there. State should be something external. So let's try to, let's try to uh, replace that with a better functionality. Better functionality uh, that is, uh, that we can achieve using simple uh, functional techniques. Uh, that is, fu passing functions as parameters and uh, abstracting over, uh, over type. So let's try to do that. HTTP uh, routes is a new one. So let's start over. Uh, not start, that's not it. Let's copy the, the thing we have here. So without the state, just the route itself. And let's name it like a, it's a factory function. So def create, sorry, get game, get game route should just return uh, a route. And this route will look like that. It has a path games. It needs to, uh, this is the, not the one that I wanted. Yeah, this is the one I want. So get games. Uh, should just have a path games and int number, which is a game ID, and then uh, get request should just get the game. Uh, so we need to complete the game with this Pac-Man thing. And as you can see, compiler is failing because we don't have any state. So uh, we can just get rid of this mess. We don't want to have uh, to deal with with the state. So we just uh, say, okay, I just want to be able to get uh, to get a game, right? Uh, get a game based on the int. So we just need to pass a function to this uh, factory method. We don't really care about how state is implemented. We just want to have a, uh, a possibility to get the, uh, get the state. And instead of this, we just call this function. So very simple. So we got, got rid of the state. And the next problem we have here is uh, uh, that this game state is like a domain object, right? So this is this immutable snapshot of, uh, snapshot of the world that we are using in our game engine. So why does HTTP layer need to know about that? Uh, in my opinion, it shouldn't. But let's check why uh, does it need to know about that. So we can just abstract over this type. So let's call it G. And uh, then we compiler will tell us why does it need game state. And we, we can see that it needs game state because it needs to get a Pac-Man. So Pac-Man is the only thing that the HTTP, this HTTP layer needs to know about because it needs to serialize that. So in order to really get rid of that, we need to have a possibility to get a Pac-Man based on, on the G. So this is another function that we need to just pass to this factory method, okay? So G and uh, based on G, we need to get a Pac-Man. So this is this is the functionality that we use. And of course, this kind of approach, those two simple techniques, passing functions as parameters, those are the mocks that I talked about. Just one function, interface with one function, nothing more, because those are just separate ones. So it's very hard to get them wrong when we are mocking and, and in production, which, will, uh, which I will show you in a, in a bit. And of course, the same approach can be done to uh, the other ones, like create game route and, uh, and the other ones like uh, set direction. Very, very similar, as you can see. Again, we are just using a set of functions. And if we can see that there are five or seven functions incoming, then we can uh, probably uh, figure out that th there's something wrong with uh, our, uh, our design. OK. So let's see whether it complies or not. It doesn't, because I uh, have the one brace missing. All right. Where is it? Where is it? No. Okay. All right. So this is this should compile type parameter shadows type G 
Uh, okay, I know what I did wrong. Did I? Here. Yes, finally. Yes, okay. Hopefully this uh, will compile. Yeah. So uh, let's figure out how can we test this get game route um, functionality. HTTP routes test. Uh, so allow getting, again, very, very simple test, right? We should have something, some initial state or initial request. Then we should pass it through this production code. This is production code, real code. And then assert on something. In this case, this is HTTP layer. We don't care about state. We don't care about anything else. We just care about how to get those requests in and serialize or deserialize to JSON. So get game route. Uh, let's uh, read it. Allow getting Pac-Man state in, existing, uh, in an existing game. So uh, we can just use this function that we created, get game route, and instead of using game state, uh, which has you know grid, next Pac-Man's position, things like that, all the other things in test we would then need to just instantiate it here. Uh, we can just use something uh, different, like fake game, because it's abstracted, right? So now we have more freedom as a client in test and in production code. Uh, to really uh, create something simpler. In this case, we just need an identifier and a Pac-Man, right? Because the, uh, the Pac-Man is the one that we will be asserting on here in this JSON. So we need to create a Pac-Man with position, uh, position two, one, and direction east. Right? So this is a fake game. And the game state is, is far larger than that. And uh, so in this test, it makes it simple, simpler to write and, and, and read, and quicker, of course. So we can uh, have this game route based on fake game, Again, we're just mocking data. We are not mocking any behaviors until now. So the only behavior that we'll mock is a function that uh, is called get game, as you can see, int to option of fake game. And in this case, we want to test what happens in HTTP layer when the game is there. So we just return some uh, fake game, and we don't care about anything else. And uh, more, and a get Pac-Man is just a uh, function that returns Pac-Man from this fake game, and uh, that's all. So let's try to let's try to run this test. Hopefully it will, uh, it will run and pass. Again, very simple. No HTTP server is running underneath. With the, we are just testing the route. So in AK HTTP, which is used here, we can do something like that. Uh, so all the you know, opening sockets and things like that are test is tested in, in the external library. We don't have to test it again. We just want to test the behavior of our route, which then we pass to the real server. Something like that, and uh, another test is uh, what, uh, how to test when this game is not there, right? In this case, we will use very very similar thing. Uh, we'll use this fake game uh, thing, get game route with fake game. But uh, in this case, we want to uh, check what happens when uh, something's not there. So we just pass none and get Pac-Man, and this also should uh, this also should run fine. Uh, hopefully, right? So. Uh, we should get status not uh, status code not found something, uh, something like that. And all those other tests are uh, are doing the same thing. We have requests, JSONs, no state, uh, no state at all. Okay. So again, what we did is uh, we created a fast table real uh, test that is document documenting something. We used HT we used HTTP to test real production routes. So we don't have to create server. That's why it's still not flaky, very stable and and fast. And the uh, the thing that we got when while doing that, so we just do, we we were just doing tests, but we also what we also get is we get some separation of concerns because this get game route doesn't really know to know uh, no doesn't really need to know about uh, state about anything like uh, how to get uh, how to uh, how to uh, what the, what is game engine what this game engine should do with the game state doesn't need to know about uh, game state so the responsibility is. HTTP and JSON, no game engine, and of course the concerns uh, like how to how to get a game from the state, we just pushed upwards. So our future selves will need to take care of it. So let's do that immediately. Uh, so our future selves uh, need to care, take care about handling state. So state in this game should do something like that. It should hold multi multiple states 
because there, there can be multiple games. And uh, based on the ID, the different players can get different states. And of course, it needs to be updated. The Pac-Man needs to move without players doing anything, right? It, it will just move until it hits a wall. So those two requirements are needed. And because we did all these pushing concerns upwards, we can just get something that is already done. In this case, we can use a concurrent hash try, a concurrent thread safe lock free implementation of state, and we can just put it, stick it in our get game route thing. So state.get is a function that we really need, and that's, that's all. And this is just one piece of, 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 of code that's connecting all the dots together. And again, th this hash try, ha tr sorry, tree map thing is already tested. We don't have to test it again. So we, what we want to do is we want to have a very, very simple connection. So no logic, no like very, very smart pipes, just, uh, just the logic uh, in order to connect the dots. The dots are state, the dots are the game engine, and the third dot is the HTTP route. So in this case, we are just sticking those things together. And the connection in the project, the GitHub repository will, will be shared after the, after the talk in the last slide. This is like a 20 lines of code, nothing more. So all the connections are really done in 20 lines of production code, uh, which we can also test very, very quickly. Uh, that I will show you in a bit. And of course, the second one, the sticking is a, is a scheduler, right? So what we uh, can do is we can, uh, again, connect those three separate concerns, which is the scheduling, the state, and the game engine in two lines of code, uh, three lines of code, if you, if you count the braces. So these three lines of code connect all those things uh, to, uh, together. So we implemented it without implementing any more tests because it's all uh, tested in the scheduler and in this uh, test, uh, in the hash map test. But we can also have a quick integration test using this kind of approach. Scheduler can be mocked, so we don't have to use real time. Uh, we don't have to uh, have HTTP server because we can just uh, con uh, we can just run the production routes. And let's see how does how does it look like. So the very very quickly stateful HTTP route. This is the the place I told told you about. Uh, this is all that we need in order to create running server production based with uh, concurrent uh, states and game engine running Pac-Man games. And uh, the test for it, this is a stateful HTTP route. So the test for it looks like that. Integration test. It's really integration test because we are not mocking anything uh, from, the, from the logic perspective. We are just using the test scheduler in order to have like these ticks, right? So each time the tick duration uh, moves, then we, the Pac-Man state changes and we're just asserting on it using the HTTP. So we are not using H, uh, engine directly. We are using HTTP layer connected with some state, uh, with some state that we are also uh, using here, and that's uh, all. This is the real production state, real, produ uh, real production code game engine. The only thing is that is mocked is the test, test scheduler. And this is a real production happy path uh, 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 integration test, integrating all the components in our service. And it, it should also run very, very fast, uh, like 600 milliseconds, because uh, it doesn't really uh, do any side effects uh, outside of, of, of this one thread, right? Okay, so that, this is how, how we can really use the fast, quick uh, test approach. So in order to have service integration like the very, very standard traditional approach, uh, we don't really need service integration categorization or unit categorization. What we want to have is we, we want to have fast, stable, and real tests. And if we can do integration tests using this approach, we should do it without creating HTTP servers which are tested separately. So the only thing that is missing here at the top of the pyramid uh, is the one that we can't really do in this way. So let's find out how can we really test this top of the pyramid, uh, especially when we have many services, because so far we just had one service, right? right? Backend service engine HTTP layer state, nothing, nothing more. Very, very easy. Uh, can be traditional approach can be used here. But usually we, we have more services uh, and more services that, that are implemented by different teams. So we need to have like quality gates all over, right? We need to be able to deploy and be sure that everything works so far. Uh, so, so far. And 
on top of that, we also have different non-functional things like service discovery, circuit breaking, security, uh, scalability, routing, right? If we want to test something, and all those things are really messing with us. Uh, and more tests, uh, more services we have, the more those things are biting us. So it gets harder the more services we have. It gets harder, especially when we are in the cloud, even the pr private ones. So testing on production is the one thing that uh, I'd like to suggest in here. Uh, but bear with me. Uh, it's not like that, that we want to implement a, a new feature and just uh, push it to, to the server. We want to use a, a something like testing on production in isolation. And this, there is a, this new sidecar service mesh, appro mesh approach. Who knows about that? One hand. Cool. That's a talk for you, then. Sidecar. Sidecar, if we have a container, containers in our production environment, and our application is uh, a container, like app container, so backend and frontend, are up containers. We can also put something, uh, a an, an next container next to it, which is called a sidecar. And this sidecar is the only thing that our application is connecting to, this local one. The other application, the other service, uh, our container, is also uh, having this sidecar communication. And only the sidecars are communicating with each other. So we are pushing all the responsibilities for service discovery, for circuit breaking, security, Telemetry, so monitoring, you know, things like that, we are pushing it to the service mesh. Service mesh is sidecars plus the control plane. As you can see in this very, very nice diagram, uh, sidecars are controlled by this control plane, and we only have this API to this control plane. We can do different things, I will show you in a, in a minute, very, very cool different things with this control plane, and the sidecars will synchronize with each other. Our services will stay as simple as I've shown you on, uh, uh, in, in this in IntelliJ, and still will have circuit breaking, monitoring in Prometheus, will have a possibility to test on production in isolation without changing our application. Uh, so we want to have these production-like properties in our software, and Istio is the one I will be showing you. There's also a Linkerd, but Istio is really, really pushing, pu pushing forward. It has lots of support from you know big companies, and uh, there's this Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Also, those are guys that are trying to get all those projects, Kubernetes, Linkerd, Istios, and different ones, like dozens of them for now, in one place and have uh, support for, uh, for that. And of course, they, they have uh, strange requirements because I if you want to have a project in this Cloud Native Foundation, you need to have a domain with IO suffix. If, if you can't have it, you can't be a member of this uh, foundation. And of course, they have gear for, uh, for every project. So for example, Kubernetes has uh, socks with the logo, and Istio uh, has uh, t-shirts, just t-shirts, because it's a smaller project. And, but uh, socks are coming. So let's see how can we use Istio and Kubernetes uh, in order to test our software in production. Uh, probably Some of you probably seen my presentation on, uh, on Snake few years ago. So what I did, where's my, where's my, sorry, my computer is, is very crazy today. Uh, what I need to do is figure out where is my mouse. Yeah, it's here. Okay, so let's see. Okay. So here's my uh, terminal. I'll just use terminal here. Uh, Kubernetes, who knows Kubernetes or use it or I know, uh, played with it. So here on my computer, I have Minikube installed and Istio installed on it. I Istio has a very, very mm, quick uh, and nice documentation so you can play around with it. I will show you uh, how can we do that. And also Katakoda, who knows Katakoda? Okay, I'll also show you how to use that. So in this case, we have uh, two applications running. So uh, Bigger font, bigger font. Get pot. Uh, we have backend and frontend. And I deployed already something like that. So Snake is something that I, I did two years ago, and I wanted to very quickly do a Pac-Man implementation, so I just reused my Snake implementation in order to, to show you Pac-Man. Sorry about that, but I'm closer to having my own web game engine. 
uh, it's all squares, but it's uh, useful because it's it was very very simple to, for me to implement that. So it's, it's a Pac-Man, okay? Uh, the grid is uh, get got from this backend, so we'll try to uh, change the grid in a bit because we want to test it, right? So I will now now simulate something. This is production. This is version one of our backend, and I will use the same address. So this is a production address, and I will use the same address in order to test a, a new thing. So Istio, Istio has something like r route rules. Route rules uh, means that we can just get the YAM file, push it to Kubernetes, and now the, our rules of communication will change. So in this case, what I want to do, uh, I want to implement a new feature, which is a new grid, closer to the one that Pacman really uses, and I will just implement, where's my cube, uh, here. I will just have this route rule test v2. I will just push it to Kubernetes, and I will have a new application just for me. It will route the test traffic based on cookies or request uh, strings or things like that. So it will, for all, any other user, it will be still production. For me, because I have uh, sp sp specific things in my re request, it will route me to uh, the new uh, service. So first, I will need to deploy Istio CTL create. I want to deploy this uh, rule test, version 2. It's created, and now I just refresh my browser, and I, st I, I will have my new grid, which I worked on in the last sprint, the whole sprint. And this uh, works fine. The, the walls are being, yeah, the, the pack one cannot go through, through walls, so our engine works. This is r real code, and uh, yeah, it, it's fine. So let's see how it works. And uh, this whole work here. Yeah, so there, there is a bug. It should go in the, in the other direction. We can we can try to uh, fix it. What's most important is it's, it's just working for me. So I'm testing on production with all the other services, grid repositories, uh, game engines, HTTP servers, uh, and other users don't have this request cookie or anything uh, or anything like that. So they still see the old uh, version, which is boring but without any bugs, right? So now we can just uh, create uh, a version three, which has this new uh, bug fixed. And what we need to do is we need to have just uh, a new route rule, uh, root, root, root rule in order to have it. We again refresh production, and this, this bug should be, uh, should be fixed. Right? So we are just using this kind of approach to test in, in production uh, in, in isolation. And of course, if it's a sidecars all over, we can have a Prometheus uh, and Grafana deployed with this the same kind of approach. So what we need to do is we just apply this Prometheus YAML, and the sidecars will know that to push the, all the HTTP metrics from our applications. The same for Grafana. The, we just we, we do kubectl apply Grafana, and we have a Grafana running like, like here on, on my local host. Uh, and Prometheus also, there are some requests. Uh, because I implemented uh, the GUI in a way that it does request real HTTP request every uh, every uh, 200 milliseconds to you know to get this kind of setup uh, working. So this kind of this kind of approach uh, we can have all those tools implemented for, for for us. We push the responsibility for communication of services uh, to a different uh, different instance. So this is uh, this is something that we want to. This is something that we want to uh, try in our new game. Uh, we'll be using Istio and, and Kubernetes. It's, it's unproven and very, very new. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see how it works, and I will share what we find uh, and report it back to you uh, in a few months, I suppose. Uh, thank you very much. The whole thing is in this uh, repository, all the links, Istios, things like that, root rules, uh, root rules. My name is Michał. This is my Twitter, and this is my blog. Thank you very much for your attention.